Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 48 and it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. So there is a time gap between 4731 and 48.1. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me was in the land of Cana and blessed me. Going back through his life here. And said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. This goes from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to the twelve boys. You march this. And what God said to Isaac, especially Isaac and to Abraham, you march this to the United Nuts in New York City and say, that land, you leave it alone, it's Jews. I don't care what Ishmael said. Ishmael has nothing about it. Read Genesis, guys. Now ask me, read Genesis. That is Israel's land. And you guys bear it before long. The Bible says, if you curse that nation, do anything against that Jew, you're going to get it in the butt. Jacob has now passed in the presence of Joseph and his two sons in a mouth of two or three witnesses. It shall be established. Jacob has passed that land grant to his sons in the presence of Joseph. There is no PLO. And as far as what has been told with David, that land goes all the way up to the Euphrates. And because the, uh, England wanted to get a little peace, they gave some to Jordan. And they lost their blessings. So out of the mouth of two or three, Jake, uh, Joseph and Ephraim and Manasseh heard Jacob say that. This is the one that got the firstborn blessing of his father Isaac. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee in Egypt, so there's, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Okay? We're going to see another later episode of this one. You see the Bible says, Levi is a tribe that's put off all by itself with a priest. There has to be twelve. So God split <coughs> Joseph into Ephraim and Manasseh, and it's because of what Jacob does in chapter 48. And we'll get to that in a minute. But right here, he puts Manasseh and, and Ephraim as it were his own sons. Reuben and Simeon, the firstborn and the secondborn. They lost their birthright. And you can't say Levi because Levi's been given that special privilege of being the priest and the priest craft. And thy issue, which thou begettest after them, grandchildren. Nowhere in the Bible does it say grandchildren. Don't know if they knew that word or not. It's not there. And that's where some of the problems people have. Well, how could it be his son? When it, son could be grandson. Great grandson. As with daughters. Issue that begins after thee shall be thine. In the name of Joseph. And shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. Joseph, your children are going to be named the children of Israel. 
what he's saying. Just because you're in Egypt. As for me, when I came from Paddan, Rachel died by me in the wilderness of Cana in the way, when yet there was but a little way to come into Ephraim. Ephraim Benjamin. It's the name of the place. It's called Bethlehem and it's called Ephraim. There are two Bethlehems in the Bible. How do you de how do you distinct the two be Bethlehems? One's in Ephraim. In the land of Benjamin. The land where Benjamin's mom dies giving birth to him is the land that's given to Benjamin. Isn't that remarkable? Yeah. So you say, well, how come it says, and I, I realize like this, and then God knocked me on the head with, with a spiritual hammer. He says, eat this. In the Bible, like he told Ezekiel, eat this roll, eat this word. He says, eat this, how about that? It says, Rachel's crying for her children, and I can't quote it completely, but in the city of Ephraim, Bethlehem, she's crying. She, and you say, wait a minute, hold on. Rachel only had two sons, Benjamin and Joseph, out of the 12 tribes. Judah is the one is primary getting you would think their children are getting killed, but Herod's killing everybody. Why is Rachel given the credit, not Leah, not the other two handmaids? Because she's in a place where Benjamin is born. She's in a place where she died. And the land of Benjamin, Jerusalem, if you check Joshua, belongs to Benjamin. But they're all classified in Judah. We live in Daytona Beach, Florida, but we're also classified under Volusia, the county. So Ephra and Bethlehem are the same place. Like I said, it distincts Bethlehem because they're two. This is the place that Rachel died. This is the place that Ruth will bring, I mean, Naomi will bring Ruth. And Ruth will work under Boaz and gets married. Boaz is has the line of Jesus Christ. This is the same place that Joseph and Mary will come to because of taxation. I have to bring that in the last place message. And she's going to be in her time of delivery and give birth. I was even thinking, I like to think with the Bible, a little extra credit there. And like, you don't have to believe this, but wouldn't it be funny if the place where Jesus was born is where David took care of his sheep? That would be interesting. A very place that David would went to, maybe his home place when it comes to the show. I don't know, maybe. Think about it. I don't think it would be wrong. Rachel died by me in the land of Cana in the way. It wasn't the land of Israel yet. When yet there were was but a little way to come to Ephra. And I buried her there in the way of Ephra. The same is Bethlehem. There it is. So much in Bethlehem that happened. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Now, you can't say that, oh, you know, he's not like he's never met Abraham and Manasseh. His eyes are, are they're old, they're going bad, and he probably just sees two shadows. And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons whom God has given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them, and embraced them. And he said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face. And lo, God has shown me also that I see. Now look, if you give God the credit, you, everything that Jacob has done wrong in his life, he loves God and wants to do right with God. Do you know somebody else in the Bible like that? He does everything wrong, but he loves the Lord. Peter. Peter, I mean, Peter, Jacob is action. Peter is mouth. And we say, you know, Peter, but you know, he really loved the Lord and he just really wanted to give the Lord at all. Listen, he's on he's on the top of top of the mountain transfiguration. There they are. And there's Peter, James, and John. And Peter looks over. There. Hey, let's just build. Some, let's stay here. Let's camp out and let's have ourselves a fellowship with the law and the prophets. And G and he puts Jesus first. Give that much credit. I remember too. He's already spent seventeen years with Joseph, who 
boys were born before. Yeah, it was born before. They're very dope men. They're dope men, and he can't really. Joseph could have brought anybody in. And there are probably people going in and out. I mean, listen, he's got 12 sons, and I made grandchildren, and three wives right now, and there are probably people coming, and here's two shadows. Who are these two guys? They've been here for a while. He kissed him and embraced him, and he said, Unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God has shown me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees. That's kind of interesting. I don't know what to say about that. And he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them, both Ephraim in the right hand, toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand, towards Israel's right hand. Manasseh is the firstborn. And brought them near unto, unto him. So, the right hand was supposed to be going on Manasseh for the blessing. The left hand would go specially on Ephraim, the secondborn. All right, Joseph is setting him up for the main right hand of power on the firstborn. And wouldn't you know that Jacob is reaping again and he's going to mess that up. But he's going to do it by the power of God. And Israel stretched out his right hand. And laid upon Ephraim's head. That's the second born. Wrong head. Who is the younger. And his left hand upon Manasseh's head. Guiding his hands wittily. He knows what he's doing. For Manasseh was the first one. So he's sitting there. Here's Jacob's head. Here is Manasseh. Here is Ephraim. He's got his arms crossed like this. If you can see in the video. I don't know what the audio can't say. And as far as with Joseph's son, here's this firstborn right again, messed up. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk. This is the God of Abraham and Isaac, the God of me. The God which fed me all my life long this unto this day. The God that took care of your great grandpa, the God that took care of your grandpa, and the God that's taking care of me, Joseph. The angel, capital A, that's Jesus Christ. Don't you let any Bible, don't you let any uh, uh, professor, or anybody of a seminary and all that not give the credit. Because it wouldn't be capital. Which redeemed. That angel redeemed. No angel can buy your soul. If an angel can redeem your soul, then the Catholics are right. And they're not right. This angel brought, bought, uh, bought Jacob. And there's no other that can buy you. For me, from all evil. Bless the lads. And let my name be named on them. That's where it has now the 12 tribes. Levi is that priest class. Now Joseph has been split into two. That's why you read Ephraim and Manasseh in the 12 names of the son. Because of what Jacob just did right now by Jesus Christ. He says, listen, Ephraim and Manasseh are not the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob there, when he's blessing the blessing of the first, he's not even blessed his sons yet. That's the next chapter, Lord willing. He is blessing Joseph's children first. There's a, oh, J, Joseph, I love you so much. Bring your boys in here. I'm going to give them a special flavor. And I'm going to bless the wrong one. Again. That's what happened with Isaac. That's what happened with Esau. So now you say, why does God do Ephraim and Manasseh and takes away Joseph and takes away Levi because of this right here.
Because God knew he was going to call Levi out. He's not going to have Levi counted with the land possession. They're the priest class. And this right here gives God opportunity to split Joseph into two. And there's 12. Now, when you see the 144,000 in Revelation, when Ephraim is missing. Levi is a priest again. Dan is missing. And Joseph is listed as a priest class. By the way, the Jehovah, no, the Mormons believe they're of Ephraim. And there's an Old Testament book, I forget which one it is right now, that says, you know, Ephraim's joined the idols, let them alone. There's much in this Bible, I'm telling you. The, my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. That's the same kind of blessing with Isaac and to Jacob. Bro. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. Now the Mormons will profess that they're Ephraim and that, you know, they're the right ones and all that, like I've already said, blah, 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 blah. Joseph finally realized, wait a minute, Dad, you're senile. Come on, put your hand in, put your, no. And Ephraim, and Joseph was just, when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on his head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head onto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said, said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. Joseph, hey, you're wrong, Dad. You see now. And his father refused. And said, I know it. I know it. Verse 14 says his hands wittingly. He knows what he's doing, my son. I know it. He also shall become a people, the firstborn. And he shall also be great. But truly his younger, Ephraim, brother shall be greater than he. His seed shall become a multitude of nations. So. And these two boys come from a Gentile woman. That's Egyptian. Of the priest of On. Is her father. So they're half breeds. They would be the Sumerians that the people in Jesus' time hated. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim, as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. So Manasseh is no more the firstborn, as far as the blessing. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you. Bring you again unto the land of your fathers. You're going back. And Joseph will. But not alive. His bones. They're going to carry Joseph's bones back into the promised land. And I think they bury it in the land of Ephraim or Manasseh either or. And bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Well that's. Jacob also got to be Isaac is also got to be Abraham and yet people have a problem with that but they say the founding fathers of America and you can name them no difference moreover I have given thee one portion above thy brethren I forgot to look this up which I took out of the hand of Amorite with my sword and with my bow and I think, let me see, is that John chapter 4? I think it's John. I didn't look it up. I apologize. If it's wrong, I think it's John chapter 4. When he meets the woman at the well. John chapter 4. And let's start in this verse. One good place to start. 
When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. He must needs go to Samaria. Half-breed Jews. Get this. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar. Sychar. Near to a parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. He's got half-breed children. Now Jacob's well was there. And Jesus sits down with his well. And along comes a woman. He chit-chats with her. She gets saved according to the time of Jesus. She invites every man in the city out. And they're starting to get saved. And the disciples are like, what is going on here? Don't you want dinner? No, no, no I want to enjoy this fellowship that these people are getting saved. But here, this land that we just read in Genesis 48-22 is in Samaria. This is the well, Jacob's well, where he meets with that woman. And we read in Genesis 48, the title deed. Here, here Joseph, I'm signing this over to you now. With the presence again of two witnesses, Manasseh and Ephraim. That's your land, Joseph. Now, how's that? And John, in the Gospel of John, by Jesus Christ, records, Hey people, that, land, that, that parcel belongs to Joseph. What happened between Jacob and Joseph, there it is. Now let's go back to Genesis 48. And let's see. Where is it? I'm looking for something else here that we need to look at. One more, please. Well, somewhere in between verses 13 and 14, there about, would you find Hebrews 11:21 that we read last night? How come, how come the Bible says that one place Jacob leaned upon the bedpost, and another place he said he leaned upon his staff to bless the who? The sons of Joseph. Well, the sons of Joseph were not in 47, they're in 48. Hebrews 11, 21 is talking about what we just read today. When he removed himself off the bed a little bit, he got his staff and he was leaning on his staff while he was talking to him. They probably put the staff down to put his hands on the boys. In the previous chapter, 47, Joseph comes in he's leaning up on the bed with all his hope. <laughs> He's at a point right now, he can't hold himself up, but they run to Hebrews 11 and say, well, how come, you know, it's called a bedstand? How come one place is called a staff? Two different chapters. There it is. Oh, Hebrews 11, when we read last night, Hebrews 11, 21. It says he leaned upon his staff, and here's the boy. Here's what he's doing. So this is why you have Ephraim and Manasseh not naming Levi and not naming Joseph. Joseph splits into two because of Jacob. And then the message even more, Ephraim is given the blessing like Jacob was instead of Esau. And es uh, Ephraim gets into a lot of trouble, but they'll get right. That was interesting.